Um, then some additional tips. Uh, as said before, whenever it's possible, try to perform your calculations in the database. So, so that relates not only to creating views in your database, so creating the view that you were about to or were, were to, uh, to create in custom SQL. Also calculations, if they are quite complex, and especially when they're quite complex, try to perform them in the database so that um, that Tableau doesn't have to have to do them uh, in, in in Tableau itself, especially when you're uh, you're having a, a live connection that can take up uh, quite some time if you have performance issues. Um, then again, aggregate as much as possible and avoid using low, granul low granularity calculations. So also with um, with level of details, um, try to use aggregated calculations and because Tableau was meant as an aggregating aggregative tool and not a tool that is showing. Um, records uh, of data because we have other tools for that so try to aggregate your data and try to uh, to limit uh, to the granularity uh, then one that 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 actually was surprising to me uh, uh, two years ago uh, is when you're aggreg aggregating um, take minimum and maximum or some instead of uh, average uh, especially when you're working with level of detail calculation because average will um, will go through the entire data set uh, and take the average of each and every row, whereas minimum and maximum will find that minimum and find the maximum within your data set and will just um, show that value. And that is um, that performed better than the average function. Um, then blending, um, maybe before I go into the, the blend, blended fields, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with uh, with blending in this call, so I'm just going to, uh, uh, to show that shortly. Um, so let's say we have a data source which is which shows the sales and the profit etc from the superstore and we have another table which shows the orders but this is coming from if i'm not mistaken the yeah this is also the superstore but it's coming from postgres if we were to add sales here as well you see that we're now blending blending in our two data sources. so we our primary data source is indicated with a um with a with a blue check mark, our blended data source is an orange um, check mark. So we're basically combining two different data sources, which might be related, which might be not, which might not be related. Um, but this is the concept of blending. So you're basically firing queries to two data sources. In this case, sample superstore uh, being the Excel um, and the um, superstore in Postgres. So you're firing two queries at once but two different, um, two different uh, data sources. So that is the concept of blending. And especially when you are blending of, and you have performance issues, um, blending is, is quite, um, it's, it's impacting performance on a, yeah, on a negative way. Because blending, as I said, is firing two queries um, at once to two different data sources. And whatever your outcome will be, it will always be the um, the result of the worst or the timing the time that you'll have to wait the time that you'll have to wait for the result will be the worst of, of both um, both queries so you're sending one to the Excel and one to uh, Postgres then 99% of the, of the cases the uh, result from Postgres will be uh, will be coming in slower and your result will only be shown once both um, both uh, both results are actually uh, rendered or actually uh, calculated. And lastly, when blending, don't try to blend on very high um, granularity, granular dimensions, because as I said, blending already takes, um, um, yeah, takes up uh, or, or can, can impact performance. It, it, it will perform, uh, will impact performance, especially when you're, um, you're blending on high granular dimensions. Um, so, um, so surely take note, note of that as well. Um, if you have transactions um, and you have uh, other related um, data also re related to, to the transactions, don't go blending on the transaction ID, but try to blend, for example, on customers or on regions and then combine your data uh, in that sense. Then, like I said in the um, in one of the first um, topics, the um, the date filtering use continuous dates instead of uh, discrete date parts. Also uh, related to indexing, because this will um, uh, will be more performant. And then, yeah, level of detail and table calculations also combined, yeah, as well as as blend, blended fields. 
those performers when becoming uh, more granular. So also make sure that when you're writing a level of detail calculation or you're bringing a detail calculation, don't um, don't try to stretch it too far and just ask yourself what is the level of detail? What's yeah? What's the level of detail I really need in this visualization? And use that instead of um, adding transaction ID to your uh, to your level of detail, for example. Um, and then similar to um, to what we discussed before, when you're using an expect materialized much as calculations as possible, uh, even with parameters as possible. And I am referring to a blog post that was um, written by one of our other consultants, uh, mystery be that's a mystery blog here. So this is a very quick read. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but where you can add some tricks um, um, in order to materialize your, um, your calculation. So this would be as is. So you have one calculation where you say, select you based on a uh, parameter, you convert your um, your sales to a to a certain um, to a certain degree or to a certain other um, uh, other currency. Sorry. Um, instead of, of doing that, you could create multiple calculations. So in this case, that's four calculations and materialize those four. And then after creating your extract and materializing those calculations, you um, could refer to those materials, materialized calculations with the parameter. And that is, um, that is quite, a, quite a cool trick. So with large amounts, this will have um, significant impact as well. Um, 